its academic and professional reputation that has trained over 15,000 professionals in 10 years. Embrace IPMAT's numerous professional programs from HND to BTEC, BSc, and MBA in the schools of Business and Management Sciences, Engineering and Technology, and the School of Transport and Logistics. Embrace IPMAT's professionalism, excellence, and consistency with solid mentorship from the University of Bamenda and the University of Boya. Embrace IPMAT's skills, development, expertise, and career orientation via workshops and academic field trips. Be part of the IPMAT family. Visit our Boya campus at Checkpoint Moliko and Duala campus at Karufu Yoro. Joss Bonamusadi. Contact 683-70-1720. The Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, the University Institute for Professionals. Good evening, televiewers. You're welcome to Prime R this evening, uh, Friday, last uh, edition for the week. We are uh, this day going to be looking at uh, the how to understand the poor and the billionaire mindset. What does it take uh, to be considered uh, having a poor mindset? And what also does it take to be seen as somebody with a billionaire's uh, mindset? We're going to be discussing this this evening with uh, experts in the domain who are already in the house. Uh, some of them are still caught in traffic. We have been waiting for them. And uh, we thought that uh, we would not wait, keep waiting. We have to start off with those who are here. Mr. Buji, Lianzin is in the house with us. Uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Good evening to the viewers. It's another Friday. and. We are excited to be here again to talk about uh, mindset, the, the billionaire's mindset, as well as um, the poverty mindset. So mm. when we are able to distinguish the two, we will know which one we should adopt. So it's going to be an, a moment for us to learn, for us to share, as we've always done. So stay with us as we ride on. Okay. We're also in the company of uh, Mr. Nibapur Mwa. Uh, good evening. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening, televiewers. It's another wonderful Friday. Yes, and we are talking about an important topic today that concerns all of us. And uh, we call upon you to contribute as always because it is the exchange that takes place between us that makes us to understand and implement these ideas that we bring up together. So let's look forward to having an exciting learning evening. Okay. Uh, from what I can uh, get from this topic, if you want to be poor or if you are poor, it's because of uh, your mindset. If you are rich or you are going to be rich to tomorrow, it's going to be dependent on your mindset. Your mindset determines everything. Of course, mindset, when you talk about mindset, it's, it, it, it's all a, a set of beliefs, uh, cultural, attitude, character, as I would love to even put it. How you react to, to things that you see, your everyday experience would be summed in this. And for this reason, the poor have a way that they reason the way they think, their thoughts, and the way they react to situations, mm -hmm. which is different from how the rich or the billionaires think. That is a central thing that mm -hmm. if you really want to make a difference, you must understand how do the poor people think. Because, for instance, things happen to poor people, but the rich, they make things happen to them. So if they want something, they go for it. But the, the poor people, they have this type of attitude that they, they, someone is always responsible for their predicament, except them. If they, they, don't, they, they, they cannot fit, they blame the government, they blame the, the, the climate, they blame everything, except them. But when it comes to the rich or the billionaires, they have a way, they are responsible for, their, for whatever happens to them. If they fail, they take... Uh, they take responsibility for their failure and move ahead. They learn from it and move ahead. Unlike the poor, they, it's, it's always another person. Is the government? Is their parents? Is one of their uncle who is rich and hasn't helped them that is responsible for their for their failure? So, if we understand these things, it will be easier for us to choose which side we will want to belong. Whether we belong to the poor man's way of thinking. Or the rich man's way of thinking, maybe like you call the billionaire's way of thinking. Yeah, if I get if I get you, uh, if you are watching us and you are poor, or you are rich, uh, it is um, 
because of the way you see yourself and uh, no, no, that way, that way. Can we take a short break? Okay, um, Mr. Buji, you were explaining, and I was going back to you to say that um, if you are rich or you are poor, it is uh, because of uh, or you. If you you one day are going to be rich or to remain poor, is because of uh, a decision you took, consciously or unconsciously. Of course, uh, mm -hmm. the decision has to be taken consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. You must not know because there are a lot of people who have the poor man's. Uh, way of thinking, the poor man's way of reasoning, or they have the poor mindset, mm -hmm. which they might not have been responsible for, especially in uh, a society where nobody takes time to teach you mm -hmm. how to reason like a billionaire mm -hmm. or how to reason like successful people. So for that reason, there are some of these things that just happen to us. You grew up in a family where when you look around, you see nobody who is rich, you see nobody who is actually... Um, succeeding everybody is a failure they're always blaming they're always complaining so we we tend to uh, adopt this attitude of complaining which they are there are things that we have learned from maybe our parents maybe from our neighbors those are things that this uh, the, the poor mindset we are not actually really responsible for it mm -hmm. we have adopted it but at the end of the day mm -hmm. you are the one who is responsible mm -hmm. for your for, for your mindset, you're mm -hmm. the one who is responsible because anything you suffer as a result of a poor mindset, you are the one to suffer alone and by extension your generation and family. Yeah, Mr. Niva, um, Mr. Buji talked about the fact that those with poor mindsets always uh, think that um, either their uncles are supposed to help them, their brothers are supposed to help them. Meanwhile, he who lives with a billionaire's mindset uh, think that they have a responsibility to fix, provide for their uncle, provide for their brothers and sisters, and provide solutions to their family, community, and nation. That's quite true, Mr. Leo. I will start by apologizing to any of my uncles who is watching that. Uh, when I was growing up, I used to accuse them, uh, you know, that they have so much money and they're not taking care of me. Right now, I'm an uncle too, and I'm understanding the shoe they have been wearing all through. So, uncles, I'm sorry, I do not know what you were actually going through. You know, actually, when you when you when you depend on others, when you look for others to satisfy you, you know, there's always that agony, there's always that cry, you know, because. People have different responsibility, responsibilities that they are looking up to. Everybody has a pain in their shoe, and they, of course, will always look forward to, to settling their own issues before they get to you. But we are in a community where uh, we are always thinking that there's somebody in the family that is so worthy, and he has so much money that is dumped in his bank account or in his house, and he is not using it to, to help us. But today we're talking about uh, the billionaire's mindset and the poor man's mindset. Yes, if you must... If you are a billionaire, or you, if you must be a billionaire, or if you must move away from the poor man's mindset, you must start seeing yourself like somebody who already possess so much and can be able to share the little that you already have. Because if you don't share the little you have, when you have much, you will not still, you will not still share. What was the difference between the poor man's mindset and the billionaire's mindset? Yes, it, it all starts with the, what our habits, you know, what we perceive. You understand because we, we, we perceive lack in your mind there's no way you can have physical abundance 
there's no way because our mind is directly related to the, to the to nature to our environment it communicates with what we what we attract and when we perceive emptiness in our mind there's no way that we find ourselves possessing that that's the poor man's mindset but the billionaire's mindset is that which you see them you, you see things in your mind you see possessions in your mind before they actually manifest in in the present in the physical because the little that you have as a billionaire you already understand that this is how this little i'm supposed to move them it's supposed to be a flow through me so that because i have that mindset that more is coming my way you know that mindset you grow it you know before you know it you you, you manifest a lot of worth and obviously when it usually occurs those who with a poor mindset will always always have a way they will attribute it because okay yeah uh we have here the copy of the billionaire's mindset and we are going to go through it mr teke is in the house uh, step by step mr teke you are the author of this book <laughs> yes um it says that uh mindset one mm -hmm. which is thought uh you see rich people think big poor people think small okay um everything about life begins from our thoughts mm -hmm. even the very existence of humans begins from thoughts before uh, a man and a woman before a child will come forth a man and a woman must have thought about it and say okay hey we're going to have do this thing and then boom pregnancy comes in i want a child you want a child mm -hmm. then boom, the child comes in so that's why the first chapter of that book is the thoughts so rich people think big couple things most mindset are um, a couple of things decisions attitudes habits that people do as a result of their living on earth that actually build their lives so if you think big you will be big if you think small you will be small now thinking alone is not everything mm -hmm. when you prepare your thought when you are trained to program the way you think just like the farmer goes to the farm and plants seeds that is what our thoughts does to us when you begin to think you are planting seeds into the atmosphere into the universe so at the end of the day whatever you are going to experience will be based on the thoughts that have preoccupied your mind so a man's um, experience or a man's life is a sum total of his predominant thoughts now the way the mind is programmed the mind is programmed to accommodate thoughts both either negative or positive thoughts so we are trained to an extent not to think negative but we've not been programmed on how to keep positive thoughts so you can say hey don't think negative then you remove negative thoughts and the mind becomes empty as soon as it's empty the first thought that will come in is negative thoughts why because uh, m most part of our thoughts are as a result of our present circumstances so if you have to walk in the space of the successful or to develop a successful mindset you must always learn to always replace your thoughts when circumstances come for example you're hungry that's a circumstance it begins to generate thoughts of hunger and hardship in you the only way you can destroy that is that why you are hungry you have to replace it with thoughts of I have enough food to eat when you start thinking that way the universe begin to gra gravitate opportunities towards you that will actually give you food you come from a poor home there's no money you struggle to go to school but if you've been trained how to manage your thoughts why you wake up in the morning you know I'm going to school today there's no money for me to eat during break but that circumstance will not uh, um, drive the way you think you now start uh, 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 discipline yourself to say I have enough money I know I'm going to have food to eat during break I have money to take home to take to school and all of that and you are replacing this thought as you replace the thought people will begin to come around so if you really want to grow big and be successful you must learn to think big initially it's, it sounds ridiculous it looks like something that can never happen why do I have empty, why am I empty pocket there's no money in my bank account no money in my pocket and I say I'm rich it sounds like it's ridiculous like why should I say that but that is how the universe works that's how God operates the Bible says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and God thought if you read the Hebrew translation I say and God thought and said God saw that there was darkness he thought that there could be light and then he said so the next thing that follows our thinking should be our words so when you think about it and speak it out even when you are alone if you think that you can be rich say I have a lot of money speak it out 
have a lot of money. When you speak those words, you are planting a seed into the atmosphere. And this is good to the atmosphere. It will stay there. It might not come immediately because no seed germinates the same day you plant it. So it goes there, stay there for a while. When it's ready, it will fall back to you as rain when the clouds are heavy. It means you have to keep thinking and speaking, thinking and speaking until you feel the atmosphere. This is a little bit um, abstract here. <laughs> I, want us, I want us to go practical. Mm -hmm. That um, somebody is watching us from Uyuka now. Mm -hmm. is, is renting one room house with the kids and yeah. wife. Mm -hmm. Things are pretty difficult. You've lived that life now. Mm -hmm. There are people watching us from Kumba, in Bermenda and other places, and they are really tough. You see, a rich man thinks big, yeah. and a poor man thinks small. Mm -hmm. Yes, in that circumstance, let us assume that majority of people are poor in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. How should they start thinking as a rich man, even in that circumstance? It's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is what I was, this is the kind of things we used to do. I've stayed in a room, eight of us in one room. Now this is what I was doing. First, I had to write down some things I want to see, put them on the wall. Mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning, I look at those pictures of the kind of house I want to live. Every morning I look at them and I say them to myself, this is where I want to live. If I want to eat, even if it's Gary, I was sipping Gary, I'll put the Gary in a different plate, put the granite on a different plate, and then I'll eat it with my cutlery. I pretend as if I am eating on the dining. So I lived that kind of life, even while I was going through a lot. I didn't allow my circumstances to override my thoughts. Mm -hmm. So how do you live? You're living in one room with your wife and two all those situations. You have to keep talking it. Mm -hmm. It's a discipline you have to put to yourself. You have to tell yourself, tell your wife, hey, like this is how do I do it. I tell, I tell myself, if for example, I don't have salt at home, don't, your wife should train your wife not to come and tell you salt don't finish. That's a negative way of programming your future. Say we've run short of salt, we need to replace it. You're telling the universe that I need money to get salt, and the universe will generate resources that you can use it to buy salt. But I say salt don't finish. The journey, mm -hmm. the spirit that is in charge of bringing things to us, mm -hmm. will simply say, hey, or God one may sort finish. So they'll bring circumstances that you will not be able to have money. You'll be having circumstances of things being finishing because your mouth has said it. See, by their mouth they shall be justified, and by their mouth they shall be condemned. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Ev, you are also in the house with us. You people are caught in traffic. I don't know whether we should buy uh, helicopters <laughs> eh, so that we will take, transport you from Bonaberry through the traffic and drop you out here in Bangor. But uh, summary of the thoughts, it says that uh, always learn to write them down. Mm -hmm. That is what you think about. Uh, put them into practice, then decide to see yourself better than who you are at the moment. Um, I love the fact of putting it down. Mm -hmm. I've always encouraged people to have a vision book. Okay. Personally, I have a vision book, and of recent people now talk of vision boards. It's very important to write down what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. It's very important to write down those aspirations, those things you want to achieve. Because if we want to look at it biblically, it's also stated in the Bible, I think in the book of Habakkuk, where God is telling his servant to write down the vision. Now, why do we write down these thoughts? The truth is that um, when you write things down, it sticks in your memory, other than just trying to keep it in your mind as a reservoir. Whenever you decide to put things down, it sticks in your memory. That's why even when we used to be in school, they'll tell us when you're reading, make summary. Because the more you write it down, when you're writing down, you are actually putting, you're putting what you got in your words of understanding. So when we, if we want to be able to transform our mind, get it to the point where it's going, where we can think as a successful person, where we can be able to achieve our goals, it's very important. Those things that you are thinking about, you write it down. There's actually somebody who has been watching us on, on a primer here, and so he got to me. So we're talking, and I told him, I said. You need to get a vision book, sir. It was like, vision book? I said, yes. And when you buy it, and it got to the point where I made him do a video call. He got to the, the supermarket trying to get the book because he was saying so many things he wanted to do. And at the end of the day, I was like, why do you keep talking about it? You're not doing any, any of them. What's happening? So I discovered that all these things, it just comes to his mind, but he's not writing it down to bind himself to it. 
So I told him, get a vision book. I'm sure you should be watching us right now. I'm going to get a vision book. And I said, all those things that you aspire to have, the, the places you aspire to go to, the, the things you want to achieve, write them down. It is very important. And also when it concerns uh, um, writing down, it does not just end there. It's also about when you write it down, you have to discipline yourself. Mm. And always revisit what you've written. When you revisit what you've written, it pushes you. When you write it down, it's binding you to it, like I earlier mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's what is going to keep you moving. Because immediately when you go back to read, when you go back to read it, it comes back to, it brings back to your subconscious that, oh, I had to do this. Like, if I have to attain something, I for one, if I want to attain something, I literally write it down. Even now, there are some skills I want to, I want to know. And I've written it down. And so, I go back from time to time, and I'm checking, I'm like, hey, and just funny things I just want to learn. Like I was telling someone a few days ago that I didn't learn how to ride a bicycle. And they were laughing. I said, yes, at this age, I want to learn how to ride a bicycle. And they said laughing. I said, I just want to have it. Now, for me to buy myself to it, because I have so many activities, I had to put it down. So once in a while, when I go back, I'm reading my, my activities for the month. I'm like, hey, I told myself I was going to learn how to ride a bicycle and all of that. So writing it down, writing down your thoughts helps you, to, helps you, to, helps to bring, to keep it, to help us, uh, help it stick into your memory. All right. And it's what, it's what builds self-confidence. You can only pen down something you're sure of. When you pen it down, it's what's going to keep pushing you. So all those things you've been thinking about, you have to you have to revisit them. Get a vision book, um, design a vision board. I'm sure that with time we're going to maybe be able to talk about uh, drawing up a vision board. A vision board is very important. When you have those beautiful images of the places you want to go to, it's going to push, it's going to propel you. I remember walking into the room of one of our, our colleagues, uh, one of Mr. Teke's employees. And so when I got to her room, we were, we were actually doing something. And then I got to her room, I saw her vision board. And the things I saw that was like, wow, like you have all these things in your mind. She said, yes, I'm going to achieve them. And I was really triggered. I was really triggered by it because I'm not more of a vision board person. I'm more of a vision book person. I was really triggered. And I was like, why don't you write it down? Why do you put the images? And she says, when she comes and then she sees herself, she imagines herself talking on this type of platform. With that image, there is nothing else to do than to keep walking till you get there. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to write down our thoughts. You write them down, but we should also put them into practice. Into yeah? practice, yes. Mm -hmm. And there are small activities. It's like what Mr. Teke always say that, that tomorrow does not exist for a man who does not have activities for today. Mm -hmm. Meaning that even if you put all of this down, the next thing is you have to come up with the activities that are going to channel your steps gradually to where you want to go to. It's not about thinking that, I want, oh, I want to be in this place. Oh, I want to talk here. Oh, I want to be praised. What are you going to do? I've always made mention that it's not about it's not only about where, it's about how you get to where. So if you want to get to this place, you want to achieve these things, it's okay to dream big. But the next thing is that when you have written them down, think of the activities, put down those activities that will help you get to that dream, get to realize that dream. Mm. Um Mr. Buji, rich people and um, good idea about or they have good idea about the whereabouts of money. Poor people don't have any idea about uh, the whereabouts of money. How do we explain this? Of course, uh, <laughs> for a poor man mm -hmm. uh, or someone with a poor mindset, mm -hmm. as I want to put it, uh, where they, when they pass beside the bank, they pass beside uh, Express Union, all those areas where people think that money is, they know that that's where money, money is found in those buildings. Mm -hmm. But for a rich man, the rich man thinks, knows where money goes to because he understands that money is in ideas. Money comes from the mind. Mm. Money is a product of the mind. Money is, uh, if you want money, you will definitely look to another direction. For a rich man, money is found in people. All of us here have money. Why? Because we do have needs. So if, uh, as a rich man, I understand that I will have to provide something, I'll provide something of value mm. to all of us, that okay. is where I am going to get the money from. Because I believe that Mr. Liu has my money, Mr. Paul has my money, mm. Mr. Teke has my money, Ms. L has my money. So how do you get the money? How yes. do I get the money? Mm -hmm. I need to sit down and think about something mm. that will make you 
give me your money in exchange for that. Okay. That's particular about rich people. But a poor man knows that, oh, he blends, uh, he, he, he knows that the money is with rich people. Maybe uh, uh, Dangote has, getting, uh, has gotten all the money <laughs> that is in Africa. Alaji Dampolo has gotten all the money that is in Cameroon. They don't, and maybe you be a bank, Eco Bank, that's where they see money to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, the rich man sees money in the streets, mm -hmm. it's in, uh, in people, it's in the value that the things that you have bring. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that actually makes a difference between the rich and the poor. So the rich, if you are, you are actually poor out there and you are watching us, it's because you think that uh, the money you are looking for is stored in a bank? It is taught in uh, one it's warehouse. Uh, in it's the, because yeah. you think that you are poor. If you are actually <laughs> poor, it's because you think that, that you, you are poor. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and you think that, okay, for you to get money, That's you should true. open the warehouse and then money will come. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, or that uh, somebody should give you their bank account so that you don't <laughs> get money. <laughs> yeah, but right. somebody, somebody who actually has the billionaire's mindset. Mm -hmm sees money in uh, the pockets of almost everybody living in Bonamusa yes. because that is where the billions come. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Like this, this, that I used to really say, I said, um, anybody you see in the streets is a suspect, is your client, he's holding your money. Mm -hmm. I see everybody as my debtor. So how you have to do that is always, there are two ways. Either you look for the problem they have, mm -hmm. provide solution to the problem, they will give you their money, or you create a problem for them. It's possible you can create a problem. For example, okay. it's difficult to have complete power supply. Let me not say something. Can I start that? Then I'll start making up. It's difficult to have complete power supply in Nigeria now. Why? Is it like you don't have enough power? They do, but there are certain people who have created artificial problems so they can make their money. Mm -hmm. Because the people, the dons that sell generator in Nigeria, are making a lot of money from that business, and so there is no way. It's never possible that Nigeria will have power supply all over the country. It's not. People make a lot of money from there. There are places in Nigeria today that they have 24 hours power supply where we have the real processing. Like where I stay, where I have a house in um, um, Aquaibon State in Uyo, I've never experienced uh, a blackout. They have 24 hours power supply. But in that same town, there are people that will not see light for the whole month. They are using generator, they are buying fuel. Why? Someone has created an artificial problem and the poor masses, let me use the word, the poor masses are still giving them money. So it gets to a point where, because the, the poor, the person with a poor mind doesn't think of how to solve problems, they get more poorer because they are looking at the rich people as people who can solve their poverty problem. So as in the course of them trying to meet them to solve their poverty problem, they will take the little money they have to give to them. For example, if I have money, I open a hospital. A poor man gets sick, he comes to my hospital, I take his little poverty money, add it to the much I have, and I give him drugs. And he goes. And so he can never become rich because I am solving a problem for him. Why the rich keep getting richer is because they understand the whereabouts of money. Where is money? Money is found in problems. Money is found in people. Money is found in the streets. And that is where the rich people go. But the poor people don't know those places, and that's why they don't go there. They go to look for a job. There's no money in an office. There's no money in Sonara. There's no money in the bank. There's no money there. If money was found in the bank, then I can just give you a check and then go convert it to money. I can give you my ATM card, go convert to money. Until I put money in that account, the ATM card is useless. The checkbook is useless. But the person with the poor mindset doesn't understand that. The moment they see a bigger structure, they know, oh, this is money. Don't mind those more, uh, uh, rituals that have a lot of money. But they don't know what those rich people actually do that gave them the money to build the structures. Okay, Mr. Niba, uh, that uh, we also are talking about the fact that you want um, a, a poor person just sits and is planning to get a job, like you have mm -hmm, said, mm -hmm. to be a teacher from ENS and you celebrate, the family has to celebrate now, <laughs> this sooner. Uh, maybe true. you go to GTTC, mm -hmm. that's all you need is a matricule. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, um, the guy who wants to be a billionaire, spends time reading books about those who have made it big to understand how they made it. Yes. Uh, Ali, will you see people sit down to study how to, to become as successful as the big guys out there? Well, truth be told, uh, most, most of us, we, we stop learning 
when we when we graduate, from when we graduate from school. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who actually say that I'll never read anything, even the signboard I will not read. You know, they curse themselves, they limit themselves at once. They're thinking that the knowledge they've acquired from school is enough for them to, to, to give them the millions that they want in life, which is totally an impossibility. Anybody who wants to make it big in life will be studying the patterns of people who have made it through, through to, to, to that top where they intend to go, and they see how they can fit themselves in that same journey and arrive there. Truth be told, yes, you cannot follow that same pattern here, but there are lessons that you can learn from them that will help you to get there. Because the way uh, Alaji Dampolo made his money back in the years different. is different from what uh, what somebody who is getting rich now can, can, can apply. If you go applying those old tricks, maybe it will not work again because things have sh changed. A lot has shifted, but it doesn't mean that there's absolutely nothing that you learn from uh, Alaji Dampolo's uh, journey. Because things might change, but there are certain principles, because life works in principles. There are certain principles that never change, mm -hmm. that if you apply them, they must work. So my, my, my fellow my fellow friends, uh, most of us when we when we get out of school, that's enough. We we're done reading, we're done studying. We're yeah, looking for jobs. We're looking for jobs so and can become rich. Of course, so that we can become rich. But truth be told, the jobs will be there but you will not have them. Why? Because maybe the knowledge you have cannot permit you to grab that job. Every day every day people get to me, Mr. Paul, I want a job, I want a job. I I tell them that I don't I don't even work. I'm not in an office. I don't have a job. How are you asking a job from me? See, nobody you have connections. I said that's where the problem is. Since you graduated, maybe you don't even belong to your ex-students association. Maybe you don't belong to any moving group, a progressive group where they are learning something that can make them to be better tomorrow. You still have the knowledge I graduated with ten years ago, five years ago. Back then, the way things were done is not the same today. So possibly the knowledge you had cannot help you to make money today. So you have to be acquiring knowledge. You have to belong in a place where you find yourself in a panel like this. Because actually when I sit here, I don't only talk. I learn from everybody on this panel. People send their comments. I listen keenly. Why? Because I find myself in this milieu. But people graduate. And since somehow, I don't know whether our schools really tell us that the only thing that can give us money is job. Somehow, we have that picture in our mind. And that's what we carry through every day. As Mr. Teka always say, when we don't grab the job with the degree, we <laughs> we, we now go for the master's. When it doesn't go, we go for, for the PhD. Those, <laughs> those uh, certificates are not totally wrong. But if you keep searching those certificates without changing a concept in your mind, that concept of value creation, as Mr. Buji said, there's no way, there's no way you are going to have a job. There's no way you can actually accumulate wealth. Because what will actually give you money tomorrow or today is not the certificates because if you have certificates and you can't create wealth, you can't create uh, value. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody is going to take you on their team. Mm -hmm. Nobody will come to pay you for whatever reason. Usually when I when I speak uh, when I speak and I'm leaving the stage in, in seminars, I always say this. I, I share my number, like take my number, write me on WhatsApp. I know you have my money, but I don't know how I'm going to get it, but know that I'm going to get it legally. Mm -hmm. And when people get my contact, they save it, I say write me on, what, on WhatsApp right away. When I get home that day, what do I do? I reply everybody. I make sure they save my contact. What happens? I now make sure what I'm posting on my WhatsApp status is what is going to create something in somebody's mind, like Mr. Teke said, that you have to create a value or if, if they, 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 there's no there's nothing that these people lack make them to see lack in them and come to you you know before you know it somebody's coming and it works like okay mr neba i want this i want this why because i have created that link with them and okay. then I'll, i'm making sure that i'm dishing out something on daily basis that can entice them to actually okay i want this can you provide it okay uh good evening to you all i'm ken frank from boya i wish to clearly know the definition of a rich man and a poor man uh, can we understand uh, who a poor man is, um, especially from our context? I don't know. Who takes? She go first. <laughs> okay. Who is a rich person and a poor person in our context? In okay. Um, as for my own definition, mm -hmm. a rich man is more of the person who sees opportunities and challenges, mm -hmm. and is rich at the level of the mindset. We're talking about the mindset, mm -hmm. and then the poor man is the one who sees challenges in everything, who see obstacle obstacles in every challenge so clearly speaking if you are that person who is not willing to build a life that can be able to impact somebody then you're poor but if you're that person who is building a life that is impacting your community impacting yourself then you are rich so when I talk about rich it's not about being just having money mm -hmm. so let's not get it twisted because some people used to say that it, money is not the ultimate because money is just part of wealth so I'm not just narrowing down to money 
So when we're talking about the rich man, my understanding and how I should regret any rich man I see is if you are doing something that is impacting your community and also solving a need in the society, then later putting money in your pocket. A poor man is more of the person who is not doing anything with what, they are, with what uh, the resources they have. So it's more about the person who is not thinking in a direction that can be able to impact their community. Okay. My, own yeah. way, my own way of, uh, of seeing a poor man, uh, a poor man is he who gets up in the morning and is only thinking of what he's going to wear, what he's going to eat, and uh, that's where he focuses. And when he gets what to eat and what to wear, he's good to go. And he starts thinking of how people are going to see him, whether actually this dress that he's putting on, do people appreciate it? But a rich man gets up in the morning and starts thinking, this is my neighbor. Uh, what can I get? So why, what is he lacking and how can I provide it? So much so that he, at the end of the day, give me some money. That's how the rich man thinks. But in that, in that, at the end of the day, the little money that the poor man has goes, to, uses it to, uh, to get food. You know, to get dresses and wear. But at the end, of, and, and, and maybe that rich neighbor, the person with the rich mindset, is the one that provides uh, the, the food and the dresses. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the, the poor man loses his money to that rich man, and then the rich man gets richer. So that's that's the difference to me. Mm -hmm. So um, if you are watching us, you must uh, think of uh, being able to provide solutions to your community. Yeah. And yeah. We should be able to help people that is uh, and, uh, and not necessarily looking for what to eat. And, uh, <laughs> like like so the, 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 the word poor is the, the made it as, as an acronym mm. that simply means passing over opportunity repeatedly. Mm. So a poor man is simply someone who thinks really about him. What to eat, what to wear, what to drink, what to this, how to pursue me. Mm. A rich man is someone who is much concerned about the community. How do I provide solution? How do I affect people and how do I do this? So anytime you start asking the question, how do I do this for people, you automatically make work without stress. Mm -hmm. But if your entire life is, how do I get this? How do I eat? How do I buy clothes? How do I buy food? The end of the day, every money you generate, you give it to the how do I buy? And so the rich man will definitely take it because his question is, how do I solve his problem? So the poor man is a person who is looking for his problem to be solved. A rich man is a person who is looking for how to solve problems. I watched a short comedy kids and um, they said two people went to pray and one was saying praying to God, he said, God please give me money, let me eat, give me money, I want to build my house, give me money, I want to do this. And another man come and say, God give me money so I can take care of all of these people who are disturbing you with their prayers. <laughs> and they said at the end of the day, God now bless this other guy that said give me money, let me take care of the needs of all of these people. And so when he was blessed, he now used his money, do all of those things that these other people are looking for. They now came to get it from him. Mm. So rich person is he that is looking for how to solve problems. Why a poor person is someone that is looking for how his problems can be solved. Okay. A rich person is uh, he who sees an opportunity in every situation. A poor person sees an obstacle in every situation. Is he the person who blames almost everybody for <laughs> the problem? <laughs> the blame game, mm. yes, of course. There are people like that. Like even in our neighborhood, there are people that are like that. They they see somebody to blame. Mm -hmm. Even when they oversleep, they blame somebody. <laughs> when they get up me. early, <laughs> they blame somebody. Why no me? Why no me? Why you me? Why you call me? Why call me? <laughs> so everything that they do, everything they face, mm -hmm. they feel that is attached to somebody. Um, I think one of the reasons is, be is that uh we some people are misunderstanding the concept of having destiny helpers like people who have a, a role to play in your destiny they are misunderstanding that so they feel like everything that has to happen in their life there must be a destiny helper and their definition of a destiny helper is what really amazes me they feel like it's a person who has to um come and push you into the water like the man at the pool of bed said that has come and push you inside the water before you get your healing. Meanwhile, it might just be you just sitting there and be wise enough to understand that the healing was just around the pool, not even in the water. So there are people who blame, they blame, they have the practice of blame game. Like everything that happens around you is attached to somebody. If there is no physical person to attach, you attach a spiritual person to your problem. See, when it concerns being rich and all the like, nobody is responsible for it, it's just you. It's a conscious decision. Um, there's one thing I learned um, when I just knew Mr. Takeda was one statement he used to me that I, I literally picked it. 
and I've always kept that. He said that success is predictable. It took me time to understand that statement. Now, how can somebody be saying, how can we be saved that nobody knows tomorrow? And somebody's telling me that success is predictable. So it means I can literally sit and know if I'll be successful or not. There is, there is so much to that statement. So if you are that person who is blaming people and feeling that they are responsible for your failure, trust me, you are in for deeper failure. You are in for deeper failure. So if you know that it's all about you being able to succeed in your life, you being able to amass wealth for yourself, then what should come to your mind is that you are the author and finisher of your own fate. Away from God is you. You are the only person in the, in the game room playing the game with nobody. The world is just those balls. All right, the world is just those balls that are there, and you are the one who is hitting every ball to make it align to the one he has to align to until you win the game. So if you want to be blaming people, don't then then just this, just know that that's where you're gonna end. So there is no need for us to live a life where we have to be blaming people. And many people are practicing that to the extent where even our parents are blaming us for them being broke. I don't know how p children got into the picture, but it happens. <laughs> Like the children, parents are blaming children. If you don't finish school, find better work. We know for really day place all day. So you see that everybody is blaming. We're blaming the government. It's happening in our circle, in our normal daily life, that people are blaming one another. You cannot dry your egusi outside. You're blaming the weather that the sun did not shine. And people are looking for other ways to dry their egusi. So they are solving a problem. Like the guy who, who uh, uh, built the egusi machine, right, mm -hmm. in Kumba. That's a need. People are saying that, oh, I cannot go and sell my egusi since I, I harvested from the farm. I cannot go to the market to sell because everybody wants the one that has been peeled already. And I cannot peel a back of egusi. And somebody sits in his house. He's a farmer. And has the same problem that you're facing. And from the information I got, he's not, he's not really that educated. He comes up with a machine, and now you are getting to him. From all, in all the information I got, he literally now does his egusi. He peels it in the house, then his wife his wife takes it to the market and sells it. Okay, uh, does that um, you have something to add to that? We are talking about about um, rich uh, rich uh, billionaire mindset and a poor mindset. If you are watching us and you blame almost everybody for what you are going through. You have a poor mindset. You are where you are because of that mindset. You need to shift. Meanwhile, he who is considered a, a rich person, or he who is considered one who has uh, the billionaire's mindset, is the person who sees every problem as an opportunity to grow. Yes. That is, um, if there is consistent rainforest that is considered by the community as a problem, they look for. The opportunities yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. So wh wherever you are watching us from, you should uh, always uh, look at uh, what to tap from every every uh, situation. Yeah. But now um, the issue is also is uh, that the winner's mindset. The winner's mindset. The poor person always think that he's a victim. Meanwhile, um, the person with the billionaire mindset sees every circumstance as an opportunity to move further, yeah. to come out victorious. Of course, um, the, the person with a poor mindset always thinks, this happens to me because of this. Sometimes they blame everybody, village people, the government, as I earlier said, mm. they blame their family members. So I even blame their children. I would have been enjoying my life. I have used this money to pay the child school fees. Mm -hmm. So all those things are they, 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 they are first of all this they, they are prisoners of their own minds because the, the poor man always looks at somebody to be blamed except him I look at um, page 61 of the billionaire mindset mm -hmm. it's very emphatic about this that the poor person sits down and, and it actually asks the question who is responsible for your poverty and the poor person knows that my poverty the government is responsible for my poverty. The society, the weather, they even blame the weather for being responsible for their poverty. Maybe you, you realize that you plant in the wrong season. At the end of the day, your crops don't do well. You blame the, uh, the, 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 the weather conditions. 
and so on and so forth. But the rich person or the winner always says that if he fails, he knows that I am responsible for my failure. Then what did I do wrong? He learns from it. Then he does the, 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 a different thing. He does a different thing. So um, winners or successful people are those who never quit. Those who never quit. Because winners never quit. And quitters never win. That's a statement that we've heard over and over again. But if you have a winner's mindset, definitely you cannot be poor because you won't be passing over opportunities repeatedly. As Mr. Teke said, poor, passing over opportunities repeatedly. There are a lot of opportunities that we've passed over because uh, someone has proposed that, please, come and save me in my shop and learn this trade. You refused. That's an opportunity. There is... Uh, people are lacking something in your neighborhood you are also lacking that thing instead of trying to provide it solve your problem and solve for others you are waiting for somebody to provide that solution that's an opportunity that it would have made you richer and you fail to understand and what you have note is that they said something that caught my attention because it's about something that I was reading uh, a few days back about poverty I was talking about but where is the origin of poverty where is this poverty? Where is the origin? How can we actually know where poverty is coming from? I look at the statement of uh, Nelson Mandela who said poverty is man-made and it can be eradicated by the actions of humans. For him, fighting poverty is an act of justice. So if you look at it, looking at um, action, uh, home for world and action, at their page, they are also talking about throughout the world, poverty has been created so that people can make money. But if you understand that rich people are because of the problems that so they have been created by society, some of them consciously and unconsciously, even the complaining altitude that we uh, have is also an opportunity. That's a problem mm -hmm. that the rich people now look at it. You are complaining. The time you take to complain and blame everybody except you, the rich man sees an, oppor sees an opportunity in your complaint and then solve the, solves the problem. You, you, you talk about maybe because things like um, money has never been taught in school, if you want to learn about money, the rich man learns about money, then teaches you how to make money. Um, if you're watching, you watching us, let me tell you what Mr. Buji is saying. He's saying that uh, <laughs> you are complaining that it's your... Uh, grandmother or your grandfather <laughs> that is responsible your auntie that is responsible for you are not succeeding when while you are complaining the person with the rich or billionaire's mindset notices your problem and comes out as a babalao and tells you that i have a solution to that their problem the little money you have you will give him because you think that he will provide your solution it comes as a problem. and then you sit again and you complain complain and the person who is very intelligent will come and say i'll take you to a church you spend one year there you'll be giving the tithes and the this and the this and the money is growing while you are complaining and that's how so people with the smart billionaire mindset they look at the they complain because whatever you are doing as you are complaining, you are sleeping in the house, you are paying light, you are eating, you are doing all of this, and the little money you have, you are giving it to the people with the rich mindset because they have created opportunities to take, collect from you and solve the little, the, the problems you, you are living with. But uh, we are talking about the fact that um, when you have a, the billionaire's mindset or the rich mindset, um, you believe that whatever you focus on is going to grow and eh? it's right. going to expand yes uh, that's that's quite true you know focus is one of the one of the principles that the the the, the rich or the, the those who have a million billionaires mindset uh, don't play with because if uh, if you if you if you if you don't if you keep jumping from one branch to another like a monkey uh, you never really get what you want. Like today, people know you for, for being a bike man, and somebody gets up tomorrow and call you that please pick me from Bonaberry to Aqua. You say no, I'm not more a bike man. Uh, today I'm, I'm I'm a carpenter. All right, 
that 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 goes they are forgotten that you are a bad man the next day they are calling you to come and zinc a house you say no uh that zinking wasn't going i'm now having the farmer's susa so i'm hoping that i'm going to start harvesting, harvesting my crops in uh in the next three months and after three months they call you and ask for crops and you say no the crops didn't do well i'm thinking that okay maybe i should start looking for another job you know people get to people get to, to things get to follow you depending on how much you can focus on that you know because as time passes you know you, you 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 get you get to you get to be noted for what you do and people start knowing you okay this person this is what people this person does and people even tend to refer people to, to, to you you know that okay this is what this person does and he has been doing he did it so well for me you understand and then they get to okay go to this person he can solve this particular problem and when you go that person solves it another person that uh, that person goes and refer another person and before you know it you are going to have so many people calling you for that particular thing but if you don't stay there if you can't keep jumping from one place to another uh, luck will not luck will not uh, identify you because people think that luck is something that you you sit and and, and then uh, someday it just locates you but luck to me is when you about you you, are, you have a prof, you have a products or services, and you are are, are, are there. You trying to, to 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 provide to people, and then now somebody who also has that need, okay, comes to you and you actually supplies that need. Uh, you, you, you satisfy that person's need. That's luck. But if you you are here today, tomorrow you are there, it doesn't work that way. You know, we we uh, we some of us who are talking on of entrepreneurship, we we are sometimes we really unstable. Eh? Today we are doing this business, and if it doesn't go. We, we think of the nearest business and this or maybe we see that this, our neighbor is doing this business we divert to that business because we think that our, our, our neighbor is succeeding which is a, a, a very difficult problem people start businesses and they think that okay by evening i should start uh i should start making profit mm -hmm. you understand which it doesn't go like that it's, businesses don't go the same somebody who wants to wants to eat uh, beans cannot wait cannot be wanting to wait the same as somebody wants to eat spaghetti the duration is not the same. In the kind of money you want to make, the kind of plants you want to, to, to the kind of fruit you want to harvest tomorrow determines the kind of seed you are going to plant. And if you think that, okay, you want to be a billionaire tomorrow, you should know that this is a huge, a very massive uh, building that I want to put. And you must focus on building a solid foundation. And that cannot take one day. Of course, during that period of building that foundation, it doesn't mean that things are going to be very smooth with you never it has never been ask anybody who has done something worthwhile and they will tell you a long history of how they had to divert from one business to another somebody that follows so much on facebook daily is a uh, steve masiwa the zimbabwean billionaire if you read his story you'll be surprised to know how much he had to fight for years and he had to even run out of his country and go and start in another country establish there before he came back to his country and if you want to start your own business and it doesn't su succeed in one month, in two months, in six months, one year. And you're like, oh, this is my own thing is not going. Let me divert to another one. You are never ever going to make something uh, worthwhile with, with your life. Be able to stay on it, focus on it, learn lessons, and grow. Because uh, if Rishma will say, the fair is jamais confiance, I'm basically not up the secretaries. There's nobody, there's nobody who has made it to the top without having brushes on the knees and the hands. Ask them. They will tell you. Is that what you said in French? That's, that's, that's what I said. Okay, okay. We are going to we are going to show. We are, we are going to take a, we are going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we continue with uh, the program. DJ. <laughs> business owner, startup entrepreneur, teacher or student of entrepreneurship, or just an individual who wants to master the art of wealth creation and retainment? Do you want to be an active problem solver in the society? This is definitely for you. The author of The Billionaire Mindset, Teke Samuel, 
has clearly written out elements and tools that you will need to break away from thought patterns that hinder you from exploiting your God-given potentials to create jobs, become self-reliant, and become an indispensable solution to humanity's problems. Read the book, The Billionaire Mindset, to get an understanding of why the rich are rich and the poor are as such. You will be surprised how much responsible you are for the results you get. As you read and learn from The Billionaire Mindset, enjoy. Okay, uh, greetings, precious Leonard uh, Kuhn. Uh, special regards to all on the studio, especially to my brother, Leontin Buji. A rich person to me is anyone with a vision. Money only comes behind a vision. Opportunities only comes when there is a vision. Partners and stakeholders would only show up after carefully analyzing the vision and seeing potentials at it. I believe if you ask uh, Teke Samuel his biggest success story today, he will tell you it is his vision that attracts all the resources he has acquired today. What is your why? Just have a strong rationale and keep going. There is nothing as the money problem. If you want money, identify problems around your neighborhood community and solve them. There we go. Oliver Shum, conference uh, speaker. Uh, good evening to you, Oliver. Um, you did not tell us where you are watching uh, from. Okay. Yaoundé? Okay. This one says, is Africa a poor continent and America a rich continent? Must there be rich people and poor people in every society? Can everybody not be rich? Okay. Yes. If everybody can develop their mindsets, they'll all be rich. Um, this one says, oops. Hello, Mr. Leonard. Uh, good evening. Good evening to my brother Paul and co. I'm very impressed with this subject of the mindset. The lady just spoke my mind with a vision board at the top. I'm a young businessman that have built up my vision board for like three years uh, till date that I'm putting that into practice by identifying some of the needs and problems of our communities, import some solutions uh, to those problems and make money out of it. That's uh, how we make it in Cameroon, the, rec the rekindler. I'm Okay, I'm texting from California, in the United States of America. The name is Edwin uh, Niba. Good evening to you, Niba Edwin. This one says, hello, Mr. Liu. Good evening to all the members on the panel. Please let me get the contact number of Mr. Tekefo. I would love him to help me to climb up the ladder. Edmond is writing from Bisongaba. Mr. Tekefo's number is on the screen. Can you just get the... Can you just get it and uh, you call him? Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. Nice topic. A shift in mindset is the key. The poor should stop looking for reasons to justify their state. They are happy when someone discourages them from doing a business. Okay. Alex is writing from uh, Boya. Good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Leo. I'm a fan with Lionel writing from Bonaberry. Please ask the panelists why they haven't replied my Pigree program. I sent it to them. Uh, are they really real it's a week now i'm sure they are going to reply to you they are real people are in the in the studio and, and you're asking whether they are real if you know where we are broadcasting from come and see them you see them after <laughs> you see you meet with them after uh, this uh, program this one reads uh, please is jaffet from Compina. a poor man is someone who has unproductive mindset eg we know ideas while a rich man is one who has a productive uh, mindset, um, Mr. Teke, rich people, you just spoke now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, rich people go into any business, business investment to win. Poor people go into any business investment not to lose. Yes, that's a very confusing statement and it was intentional. Okay. Uh, because if you put two people and then talk to them about 
an opportunity. Mm. Uh, you have the one that will say, I know I lost my money, I know I lost my money. Uh, oopsie, you yes. really to do this? Yeah. So to them, that's a defense to be, they are trying to be uh, pre precautious, they are trying to be careful and all of that. And um, the average man thinks that that is what it means to actually grow financially. Like they are trying to be careful, they are trying to be, to put all, check all balances and all of that. But a rich man, a man with a rich mindset, what they do is, I'm going into this business, I want to win. They don't think about losing, so they go back to the mindset. Because the more you say, I know I lose my money, oh, the forces in the universe will cause situations that will make you to lose your money. You, you would that situations where pe people are doing a particular business and the thing is moving on where immediately some particular person is joining the business, the business crash. They just come with a negative mindset and because they are, they, the force they are bringing is so heavy, the negative force is so heavy, the business will crash and all of them will lose their money. So the rich people will go into a business to win. They get into any venture to succeed. They don't think about if they are going to fail. Failure doesn't occur in their mind. And that's how it has to be. It's difficult to think that way. So someone will ask, is asking right now, is it possible that you just do anything? I don't think about failure. Of course, it's possible. It's a mindset you have to build per time that you get into a venture with a possibility mentality. And a poor man always go there with a doubting mentality, a failing mentality, a negativity mentality. I'm sure, this didn't work so. So, what I always ask them, like if you read that, that chapter in the building, name mindset, you always have to show is. You always ask what if, what if, what if it doesn't work? Why not change your thought pattern and start asking what if it works? Instead of considering what if it doesn't work, ask what if it works? If you ask me to do a business that will give me 10 million and I'm busy asking what if it doesn't work, question is if it works, what will you do? If you actually get a 10 million, what will you do? So why do you concentrate on what if it doesn't work to, instead of changing it to what if it works? So which people always have this mindset that if I lose, I know I have learned. If I win, I will celebrate. But poor people, they cannot take failure. They, they don't have the capacity, the mental capacity to withstand disappointment. And that's why I wrote, I think one of those chapters in the billionaire mindset, I said, the amount of money you are ready to lose can tell me how wealthy you can become. Until you are ready to lose money, then you are not ready to be financially successful. If you cannot lose, you don't have the strength, the mental strength to lose 10,000, 10 million, you can never have anything up to 1 million. So how much money you are willing to lose determines how wealthy you can truly become. So don't be thinking, if you get an, a business opportunity, do your research, but don't be thinking, what if I lose the money? What if you don't lose it? What will you do? Even if you lose the money, I wrote in one of those pages, the below name, I said, see, you have 500,000, and you are thinking, what if I lose this, my 500,000? You are broke. Having 500,000 makes you very poor. So it's better you even lose it, so there's nothing you are depending on. And know that you are empty pocket, so you can go and work very well. Because having 500,000 in the bank account might give you confidence, thinking you have money, and you cannot, you will not be able to work. Better get into a business, arrogantly get into a business and lose the money. Come back with empty pocket. It will help you to think very well. This way I normally say it. If you lose 10 million and you are still, your sanity is still intact, that means you are mature. Then you are ready for the battles of life. You are ready for the battles of life. Okay. So um, we have to be very careful. With the, we should know that uh, when we are investing, we need to put an allowance for, for risk also. Yes. You, there should be an allowance for a learning process. There should be an allowance to also understand better what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, somebody with a poor mentality says, I'm an expert, even from day one. <laughs> because only an yeah. expert who, is, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, who would say, I know what I'm doing, and after one week, I'm getting this back. Mm -hmm. It means you are not even ready to learn what mm -hmm. you want to do. Um, Mr. Leo, I would say that a rich man should have the mentor mentality. Okay. You should be somebody who is willing to learn and to know that you can never know everything. Nobody mm -hmm. knows everything. Although no knowledge is new per se, people just take what has been existing and like what boss would say, they will take, they will edit, that is they will copy, they will edit. Copy, edit and paste. And paste. They will copy, edit and paste. Although so many people used to forget the edit part, they just carry somebody's thing and say it and then say it's yours when it's not yours. Okay, so, um, <laughs> oh God. Now looking at uh, looking at um, the process of of 
wealth creation from what I've studied about so many great minds. Uh, like what Mr. Decker said, a lot of people have lost, but I feel like people who are on their path to success, they don't really lose, they learn. You either, you're either winning or you're learning, all right? And you do the both at once. So even when you are winning, you are learning while you're winning. So you should be able to prepare your mind that you should that you will have to be open to receiving more information that is going to keep you going. I think that's one of the statements the billionaire mindset that I held so much that when they go and get stuff, it's the information you have that keeps you going. So how much information do you have? You can't say you know everything. You must be willing to learn. Now you could know how to you could know how to connect. Uh, you could know how to put on the TV. Mm -hmm. Now, I could know how to put on the TV, and I have a longer process to do it. Okay, take for instance, um, let's look at a normal television, a normal TV set. You're in your house. Now, two persons are seated. One person knows that to change the channel, you have to get from where you're seated, all right, and go to the TV and change the channel. Another person has the same intention that I want to change the channel, but is informed about the presence of a remote control, that he or she can sit from their comfort, and change the same channel you're trying to change. The truth is that the both of you have the same intention. It's not about changing the channel, but somebody is more informed than you. Mm. What that person knows is that I must not get up from where I'm seated. I can use the remote control. In everything that we do, in every situation we find ourselves, in every business activity we're doing, there is somebody who has just, it could be just a, a word that the person has that you don't have. So your mind is supposed to be open to learn, your mind has to be open to. Now, when when you get in, when you get informed, you don't get um, you don't get discouraged. You get informed to be challenged, to move forward, not to be discouraged to go backward. So, anytime you're you're following the business part or whatever you're doing, whatever you, your activity you're involved in, have that mindset that you that you are supposed to be learning constantly. That's where innovation comes from. Innovation is is bred from the place of learning. If you are not informed about the trends, you cannot be able to innovate. You cannot be able to improve, even in your in terms of your language or everything. I, I, somebody said something uh, today. The person said, you know, you can have a lot of money, but you don't know how to talk. So people will not want to listen to you. You could be so informed that you cannot communicate to people. And so whatever you have, you cannot impact your, your community because communication is the key to be able to tell somebody or to give someone an information so you have to be able to open yourself challenge your mind to get from people some people literally shun others because they they have what i call inferiority complex i i term it under the word inferiority complex why do you not go for seminars okay well or we're on air but literally i asked somebody uh this question when we're preparing the audacity for success and i asked him why why are you not registering and he told me that he knows a lot that what do we want to tell him that he does not know he said i know all those things you're saying i used to i used to fall i know what mr Deke used to say i, I know broke. yeah is that they know <laughs> that they know very well so i was like okay you know all of that so what i did was i intentionally engaged into a conversation where i could just be able to get how informed he was so i was asking him questions and at the end of the day he was not making sense but i could not literally tell him that he's not making sense the only thing i told him was you know what i'm going to do i think i'll propose to our our team that we should uh, organize a connect for big people like you so when people come together <laughs> you can exchange ideas if he's watching this now he'll kill me after this and that's how we can be able to exchange ideas so he's just understanding why i said all of that because you discover that you feel that you know but trust me, when you meet a challenge, you will discover that's what you'll be able to, you'll be able to prove. Challenges are, 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 are a test to prove your capabilities, your abilities in the inside. It is when you meet a situation, you know, you could literally say, oh, I'm a talker. Like, today everybody's a public speaker, no offense. Everybody says, I'm a public speaker, I'm this. <laughs> I told somebody that, do you think public speaking is to stand and talk in front of people? That's not public speaking. If you cannot be able to give informed words, words that you put your words together such that somebody gets informed to what you're saying, then you're not doing public speaking. So a lot of people want to do a lot, but nobody wants to learn a lot. So you have to be able to learn a lot. You cannot give out what you don't have. 
if you have to keep growing your business, you have to keep growing your organization, you have to keep growing your activities, you are supposed to keep learning, have the mentor mentality. If there is something you should get when it concerns this particular area that we're talking about, when it concerns having the mind to learn, just keep these two words in your mind, a mentor mentality. Meaning that know that you can be able to learn and teach others. There are people who, st who have information st uh, stuck in their minds because they are able to, ex to, to talk it out. You know, that's uh, one of the ways of learning. If you can be able to express what you know, you discover you're able to retain more when you're talking. Mm -hmm. So it's a two-way thing. Be able to give out to somebody and mm -hmm. be open to receive from others. Okay. Uh, two-way things. Um, yes, the viewers are, are participating. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The panelists have all defined a poor man and a rich man. From my ideological and philosophical point of view, to me, a rich man is one who has created a assets to a point where he has attained financial freedom and does not need to work to live a comfortable life. But the poor man is one who will go back to the gutters if they lose their job. In case they have one already, Mr. Mukete is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Yes, that's uh, practically. Hello, warm uh, regards to you all in the studio. Mr. Teke, Samuel, and the team, Nebapol, Buji, Liansin, Miss L, you guys are doing so well with the knowledge you guys dish out. It's certain that our that a change is imminent in the near future. Quoting from the billionaire mindset, all money is someone all money is someone else's money. Anytime you try to protect money, you lose it. Yeah. We love to hear uh, him through him through more lights on this. Uh, Muma Bless is writing from Dwala. Yes, certainly uh, he's going to talk about that. Good uh, evening, Mr. Liu and panelists. Even though I haven't read all the book, but what caught my, uh, my attention in the book is poor people are afraid to fail and more afraid again to succeed. Special greetings to my brother, Mr. Buji, though he didn't reply my text. <laughs> Figo is writing from Bermenda. Okay, Figo. Uh, Mr. Liu. Poverty is deliberate acts, okay? Um, yes, some people say poor, to be poor is your decision to be poor. Hi, I'm Benedict writing from Dual. I'm interested on the program. I am and I'm listening to learn. Take a, a pen and a paper and take down notes. But if you want to learn more, call the numbers on under your screen and uh, we're going to teach you more. Mr. Liu, I'm really inspired by what Mr. Tiki just said, that statement alone from him can change everything. The amount of money you are ready to lose determines how wealthy you can be. Um, let me read the messages. Then. There are many. Good evening to you guys in the studio. I strongly believe that these discussions on financial literacy is going to help bring out Cameroonian youth from poverty, unemployment, and blame game mystery. I appreciate your program a lot. Maga and Toinette writing from Bermuda. Good evening to you all. The program is really teaching. Please, I wish to ask how can someone get a copy of the mindset? How much? Face to is writing from Boya. Face to just call the number on by your screen. Uh, if you are in Boya, they will tell you where to get a copy. Greetings, Mr. Buji, Mr. Teke, and panel. Being rich is consistent commitment to a life, life transforming vision through impactful service to humanity with results of financial freedom. Abanda Samuel. Uh, good evening to you, Abanda. Good evening to everyone in the studio. I'm Glenn from Yaoundé. Is secret society a solution to solve poverty <laughs> in our society today? <laughs> Glenn, no. It's a big it's no, 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 please. Good evening, Mr. Leo and the panelists. What is the cost of the billionaire mindset? Can you just call us uh, call us on uh, with the numbers we are going to give you? Good evening, is this Noel okay? Um, good evening, sir. Poor people have a me and focus mindsets, but no money to finance their projects. While rich people invest in all businesses without thinking of losing, but just thinking of winning. I am Brice, writing from Bermuda. Good evening, guys. Uh, thank you so much for your soul building programs. Being rich or poor is a decision. Why uh, they see barriers as opportunities for growth. The poor see but setbacks and lay blames. Victor Eno writing from Manfi. Uh, please, Jaffet from Compina. Poor man, man is someone who has some productive mindset. I read that already. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. 
trust you all are doing great. A lot of people are poor today because they have blamed others for their misfortunes and due to their poor mindsets, they end up working for people in which they have uh, the capability to create something out of themselves. I wish all the people with poor mindsets watch this and I hope you keep bringing up this topic. Is Fina from New Bell. Uh, thank you. Yes, we may still uh, discuss this next week. Hey, good evening. It's Claudia from Safe Home Restaurant Bonaberry. To me, it's not all about mindset, but the situation that surrounds people or where they find themselves that makes them feel less powerful to create impacts or so embark on influential uh, journeys. I don't know what's funny. <laughs> she, yeah, that's the mindset. She always. said, Mr. 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 is talking about mindset always. Uh, she doesn't want me to watch my media crime again. <laughs> Mr. Wuji is always talking about mindset, everything mindset, mindset. <laughs> okay. Um, rich people admire other rich and successful people. Poor people resent rich and successful people. Um, yes. yes. Of course, um, you have uh, poor people. Always, why do they even resent uh, rich people? Mm -hmm. They think that they are responsible for their poverty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not because uh, Bill Gates made all the money that he did not stop uh, Dangote from getting rich. He did not stop Mark Zuckerberg from getting rich. In fact, Mark Zuckerberg is younger than them. Mark, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg's business is even younger than all of theirs. But the issue is the poor man always has somebody to blame. That's what we are saying. And coming to it, you realize that they, the, the, between the line of uh, poverty and riches, there is one thing. For you, when you leave poverty, you have to move tr to uh, riches, but you have to pass through a bridge called ricks. Until you are able to take ricks, you will not be able to actually move into uh, the lane of rich people. And that's one thing that has kept a lot of people, which goes back to what Mr. Teke just said. Poor people go into business not to lose not to um not, not to, to lose, lose yeah. why rich people go into business to win. to win so if you are still that type of person a, a lot of reasons why many people are not investing they are taking their money their little when they take their little money they go and bank it or they put somewhere safe i put safe as in s a f e which means that they they actually protect this money from them because they don't want to squander it when you keep money there is no way you can actually Keep money in one particular place so that you will become a billionaire. No billionaire make it make it that way. You must at one point you have to take that money to bear a risk with it. And if you lose it, the only thing you are left with is to hustle more. But when you think that you have money, which is not even money, because when they say rich people should be coming out, they should bring what they have. If you if you see a rich man, you will not definitely see money in their pockets. One time uh Dangote was interviewed by uh, Mo Ibrahim. That's the philanthropic billionaire as well. Mm -hmm. And he asked him, Dangote, uh, please, are you moving with money? How much are you, do you have? Dangote says he has no uh, naira, not even a one naira in his pocket. That tells you that what? His money, the rich man's money, the, your money is not in Dangote's pocket. Where, but Dangote, just by what he knows, or by what he has built over the years, he can just get in and call an airliner you send him a plane and you pick him from there nobody will even ask him money mm -hmm. because over time he they know that he can pay so at one point i will still say <laughs> despite my sister from cell phone restaurant mm -hmm. is arguing that it's not about mindset <laughs> <laughs> it's still the issue of mindset you see the issue of mindset how have you built your mind so if you think that your money is in the poor man in the rich man's pocket what you have to do is I will challenge you to go get it. That is your money. If the rich man is responsible for your poverty, then it is your right to get it. The only difference between a poor man and a rich person is how they think, is what they do. So, and the underlining factor, you must learn to, 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 to understand what uh, the principles that rich people have understood that you have not. Like poor people, would definitely, poor people don't invest. The rich people invest. And the type of questions that poor people come and I actually deal with investments. So the type of questions that poor people come when they come to invest in Tesco, but the questions that they ask, sometimes I tell that, look, let's take a pen and paper so that you can tick. At the end of the day, you will see which side you want to really choose. Because you must choose if you want to be a rich person or a poor person. Sometimes they ask me, uh, what 
if, if if this business doesn't work i say why, why shouldn't it work if people have been coming to this business for the past four years and you're coming today and you think that and you are really asking questions that what if it fails then it means that you are not ready to be to, to be rich because a rich man when he sees an opportunity he doesn't ask questions he gets into it and knows that i am getting into this opportunity i am investing 10 million i want to have uh, 50 million in five years time mm -hmm. that is it that's what they are looking at mm -hmm. but the poor man they will even want to get the money very faster and i say the faster you want to become rich the poorer you will become mm -hmm. and and that is why they are not guided i am saying this because i realize that many right now that with, with the COVID 19 a lot of smart people are taking opportunity of our people they, they sit down and they say no if i tell these people that if you bring this money this thing is going to be doing this, this thing. you have computer engineers are at work they, they program anything and they send back to uh, to you so that you put money maybe uh at uh, robots and so on they, they they do they perform their gymnastic and then you see that business is going on you put your money when you have not asked those questions and that is why it's very important to understand that as to become rich to move from the poor person to the rich person you need to start attending seminars you need to start reading books so if you if since this year started you have not read a book then there is something wrong with you you are you, you are taking a highway to okay. poverty now uh the chapter summary talks about uh, you can never become what you hate if you resent rich people <laughs> that's you resent <laughs> almost everything about the rich uh, and you are very comfortable with the poor yeah it means you only attract what you love now yes of course i mean nature plays that very easy you know you can't you can't have what you hate you can't you can't you can't eat poison why knowing that you this is poison of which you like your life so it is very normal many people many people want to get rich but they resent poor people they resent rich people that's an impossibility that's when when you when you when you want something you have to you have to cajole it you have to caress it you have to attract it and you can't attract with hate hate doesn't attract hate only sends away you know if you want to attract something you have to build love i mean let's bring it down to uh, our daily life a young guy who sees a young woman and wants to like hey my, my dear, I want to be your friend. You can't, you can't hate her, and they want her to come closer to you. Even if you don't really, you don't really care about her, you have to pretend. You know, you have, you have to stage in a way that she would think that Miss <laughs> Ella's problem. In the way that she would think that you love her, that's how, that's how, that's how riches are. If you see someone that is already on a particular stage, and you want to be there, and you hate to be there, you know, if you have the the, the muscles, you know, if you have the energy. To go there because what drives you to reach there is the is the, is the zeal that you have and of course if you don't have the zeal i don't have the zeal to let me what, what can i say uh i have no zeal to go back to my village now so there's no there's nothing that's pushing me to go back to the village because there's no zeal there's it's not because uh, i i hate my village or circumstances you understand so what you love will obviously pull your attention and once you give your attention to something other forces of nature are going to pu push you to move towards that direction. Then, if you hate, if you hate, if you hate the rich man, there's no way you can move closer to that person. And truth be told, rich people also hate poor people. <laughs> it's not as if only, only, only because they don't want to be poor. Yes, rich people, rich people actually they, they hate they hate poor people because when poor people come around them, they don't uh, they don't contribute to their riches. Yes, when they come. Sure? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. How do how do I say? They, 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 they hate how, poverty. They hate poverty, and of course they hate poverty, and that poverty when, doesn't. Poverty when is do not they make money from? They, they make money from the poor now. That's why they make money from the poor, but they will not keep the poor, poor people around them. Yeah. Yes, okay. they make money from the poor. They hate poverty because every 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 energy we we vibrate in frequencies, and okay. where where you are, if you're either poor or rich, is is con, contagious. Mm. You understand because. <laughs> if I if I if I if I if I am emanating a, a negative mentality, a poverty mentality, mm. and I am beside somebody who has a, a, a billionaire's mindset, and I keep sticking with that person, one of us is going to contaminate it, the other mm. with the course of time. You understand? Rich people want to associate themselves. Uh, there's a friend, Galazi J1, who always say, "I am a winner, and I'm not uh, spending my life trying to make losers to win." Okay, I am pulling. I'm pulling winners. Uh, towards my direction that we can I can help them win better you understand that's exactly what people, rich people do they get people have a winning mindset towards them so that they can both win better but they will not want to get 
people who don't want to win at all around them because you have to do a lot of work mm -hmm. to transform them to yeah, winners right before first. you start pushing them to, 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 to win more of which of course and no rich man is ever satisfied they want to win more mm. so okay. they want to, yeah good evening mr liu and uh oops, stop the course please good evening mr liu and all those in the studio great program as always uh the moment each and everyone realizes that no one owes them anything in this life and begin to focus on pursuing their dreams the better along the line someone can support your struggle to yeah. help you meet your target faster than it could have uh, taken you alone to achieve it's Eve writing from Douala Bonaberry. Good evening to you. Eve, yes, that is the winning spirit. Hi, Mr. Leary. Poor man is a stingy and self centered man because of his mindset. A rich man is an opportunist, opportunist of a community development because I'm sure there is a potential source of his money that has impacted many others. Texting uh, from uh, California. Ooh. Uh, Good evening, family. The program is wonderful. Please, how can I get a full net on the rich mindset? Um, can you just call the numbers and uh, tell us where you are? We're going to supply to you. Good evening, sir. John from Bermuda. What is the difference between rich person and a successful person? Thanks. Um, yes, rich and successful uh, person. What is the difference? Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Being poor is inability to diagnose problems and make use of possible resources that surround you. Ungambi Thomas is writing from uh, Bermenda. Good evening, sir. Um, greetings to everyone in the studio, especially Uncle Paul. I'm happy with the knowledge they are sharing with uh, us this evening. I'd like to wish Shefa a happy birthday in advance. Uh, Songwe is writing from Bonaberry. I don't know what Shefa is about. Um, Victor Umar writing from Nigeria. Rich people are visionary, dreamer, and creative. Poor people have low mentality. Their thinking mentality is uh, very, very low. I uh, got to read from you, Uma Victor, writing there from uh, Nigeria. Good evening to the panel. Azinui Naomi watching from Bonaberry. Such a great topic. Most people are poor today because they blame others rather than identifying problems around them to give solutions to. Special shout out to Neighbor Paul and Co. Keep up with the good work and learning a lot from you guys this evening. Uh, thank you uh, very, very much. Um, I want to read the messages here. Please. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The program was a good one. I learned a lot from it. Knowledge uh, governing everything. So if you are rich financially, it does mean you are all. I am. Um, Bless, writing from Garwa. Thank you. Good evening to you. Bless. Good evening, House uh, Mr. George uh, State, writing from Limbe. I met the program halfway. I would wish to ask uh, the author of the Billionaire Mindset his idea behind the book. My questions follows as uh, later. Please, if you want to know more about the book, just call the numbers uh, on your screen uh, there. But, um, Mr. Teke, I want us to understand this thing that people really want to be rich they don't admire other rich people and successful people they are contented with their friends with whom they will get up from the morning go around bonamusa there in the morning sit drink from morning to night when and I, very little mention is made of uh, this um very successful people if immediately you mention their names they start castigating uh one of the i think one of the chapters in the book i, I mentioned um three uh, uh, three different types of wants. Mm -hmm. Like saying I want to be rich doesn't really mean you want to be rich. Mm -hmm. So I said, the Apostle said I want to be rich and there are some that have made a decision to be rich. So once you get to the place of decision, if you get to that point of making a decision to be rich, every rich person will become someone you admire. Someone you, because you will look at them, this is what I want. Like today I was talking uh, with the law students at UB, I think they're over 1,000. And I told them, I said, you have to get to a point in your life where you draw a punishment or a reward system for yourself. Because if you truly love your success, you, you put certain discipline on yourself that if I don't do this thing, I should punish myself. And I told them, for example, if you say, hey, I want to be, I want to be successful and I'm not going to get myself involved into any careless outing that will make me to spend money unnecessarily, 
the day you do it i said give yourself punishment that you're not going to eat for three days and everybody was, was laughing, I was like, I see it, because that's how it's supposed to be. So if you say you want to be rich, you have to put certain discipline on yourself that any rich person I see, I'm going to admire them, I'm going to serve them, and I'm going to love them. I made those decisions. If I pass around, I see a beautiful car, for example, I say, wow, I love this car. I want, I'd like to get it one day. That's what I do. I don't have to start going and say, like what? Other people will normally say, You see a beautiful, I say, Ah, no matter all those Nungu people, them who know side, they don't go put their hand. The moment you say that, you are telling, I don't know, I'm trying to say the concept of the universe, but people don't get it. That is where everything generates from. The moment you think and say things with your mouth, you are sending a message to the universe, and the universe is responsible to give you everything you need on planet Earth. And if you don't know how to respond, or react to the universe, you will always lose in life. So when you say, no matter those rich put them, who knows how they will put their hand? The universe will say, okay, hey, Jenny's, wait, until the day she, he or she will put her hand somewhere, don't give her any money, or don't give him any money. Mm -hmm. And that's how you'll be there, you'll be broke because you say, you know, sir, you believe that anybody that has money must have put their hand somewhere. So the universe will be watching you, you to go up, go put your hand on so you get money. But as long as you have not put your hand there, you will never be able to make money. So we must first of all develop the mentality, the rich man's mindset. Like I will say it, I said, we don't have a poverty problem. We have a poor man's problem. That is why the mind is, because the mind is the man. So the moment we are able to treat the mind, every other thing will take place. So don't envy rich people, no matter where they get their money from. Your concern is not where they get, they get their money from. Your concern is what you are desiring. Do you desire to be wealthy? Yes. We are not saying go and beg them. All we are saying is admire them. Wow. Thank God for your life. Whatever you have done that has made you rich, I admire you. God bless you. You walk your way. What you have done is you have simply attracted that thing in them. And your own will come your own way that nature has designed for you. So don't envy rich people. Don't criticize them. Don't insult them. Leave them to whatever they have done that have made them rich. Because riches comes with risk. And so everybody has their own kind of risk that they bear in life. And that person kind of risk is to stay for 18 hours studying. Someone's risk is to go and do whatever they have they have done that leaves them with their judgment. But what I'm saying is don't envy. If you don't like the way they became rich, don't talk about them. Just close your mouth, close your eyes and leave them alone. Figure out the way that favors you. But criticizing or resenting a rich person is tantamount, it is detrimental to your own success. Because it's going to build hatred inside of you. And nobody succeeds with a lot of hatred in them. Nobody. You cannot become rich and wealthy when you are envious, when you are jealous, and when you are hating. It's not possible. Okay. Uh, good evening, house. Uh, okay. No, no, no. I took that one already. Good evening. Greetings uh, to you in the studio. It's God's will from Santa. A poor man can never reason like a rich man. Good evening. <laughs> no, he can reason. You have to. That is why we are trying to shift that mindset. You know, Mr. Liu, so yeah. someone asked that what's your the difference between the rich and the What's the reason of you writing the book? Your name mindset. Yeah. I've, I've had people always have it talk to people that talk to my staff, some of my staff, and then put that moment and say, okay, that man that writes billionaire, I said, does he have billionaire? Is he a billionaire? Mm -hmm. And um, I always tell them, I said, before I wrote the billionaire, I said, I wasn't. But what is important in that book, but right now, I can defend it. Mm -hmm. Now, what's important in that book is not even the billionaire that you see there. The important word in that book is mindset. That's why under the billionaire mindset, you have a statement like mm -hmm. thinking into work. So it all begins from your thinking pattern. I was, I, 2018, the only money I had in my, with me was 90,000. But today the story is totally different because I was able to fix my mind and I have fixed my life. So everyone must understand that it begins from here. The money you don't have in your head, you can never have it in your pocket. Never. It's not possible. Never. Okay, it's not possible. Okay, um, yes, you cannot, you, no, just start uh, teaching yourself to, to to reason like a rich man, eh? yes. when you get up, behave big. Actually. When you are eating, like you said, even if you are eating gari yes. and Actually. behave big, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> just develop that. Make it walk, you make it. Yeah, walk into a a a a, a mall, a, a shopping mall, 
and nobody will beat you. Just yeah. ask how much do they sell this. <laughs> That is a lifestyle. Just yeah. Santa Rosa, just have the fresh air of that place. Yes. Just walk around, do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're programming your mind that this is where you want to be shopping. Mm -hmm. As much as when you have a little money, you can go and buy at that market in Bonaberry. Mm -hmm. But from time to time, just come mm -hmm. around, just walk into Santa Rosa, dress well. Even the luxury cars. Yes, walk there and move around. You can see my car, just enter and come out. Yes. Get the fresh air. Yes. It's very important. <laughs> because. This thing might sound ridiculous, but these are the things that, that gravitate success towards us. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my pastors uh, taught us, said, what, what, after when we're going to Bible school, we'll just wake up one time. Yeah, but, but, but there's something that is very practical. Let me take a particular example. Okay. That you have somebody with a rich mindset in Lima. Mm -hmm. That person has 2,000 francs saved and dresses very well, walks down to Down Beach. Buy maybe biscuit for five hundred. <laughs> huh? Yes. Then buy top for five hundred. Sits around the beach and is getting that fresh air and is having a wonderful fat. time. You have somebody with a poor mindset. He has fifteen thousand with him. He goes and sits in a stuffy place. He mm -hmm. drinks. He eats fish. Drunk. But who has who has had quality time? The guy. The guy with the two thousand and so, quality so time. when we talk of, when we say uh, behave big, it's not costly. It's not. Of Use one thousand. Enter Santa Lucia. There are things that you buy for two hundred in it. Change the paradigm. I think that's that's, that's for example. That's for, for example, Mr. Do the whole of today, I have not spent anything. Mm. But there's someone that does not even have money. They will have spent like ten thousand. Yeah. Mm. So when the, if the mindset is right, mm. you not you know you not be thinking. Some of the rich mindset doesn't think money. Mm -hmm. It thinks value. Mm -hmm. And when you think value, you don't spend. You can just go to Santa Rosa and just stay there. Yeah, look at them. Just sit around there. Yes. Buy a bottle of top. You have plenty <laughs> time. You are going to meet people. Yeah? No, you, see you know, Mr. Ray, you're talking like that, right? Mm -hmm. I keep. Uh, I keep uh, having a flashback of so many things I started engaging into, mm -hmm. because um, when I was still working there, ignore that thing, the mom. Mm -hmm. So many times when Mr. Tega will come, he will say some other things. I'm like, why, why do I really have to do this? I thought that like, and so I that was the first time I ever heard that statement that fake it until you make it. At first I did from his mouth. I was like, so we have to fake fake it how? So I said, learning so many things. So the truth is that there, there is power in associating with people who are successful or who are wealthy. I tell people that poverty and wealth has a fragrance that is sticky. When you associate with wealthy people or with poor people, there's a fragrance that comes out from them that when it gets to you, it rubs on your body and it sticks. That's the difference. It sticks. If it's poverty, it sticks. If it's wealth, it sticks. And so when you start having that mindset, it's what it's what starts propelling propelling you to be able to do some things that you were not thinking that you're going to do. I remember one day um, we were in Mr. Degas office. So he wanted to send that they should go. I think I had to go deposit money somewhere. So we were just talking, and all of a sudden, and I, I know that okay, he's always carrying money, but not that amount. So he just pulled the wrap and then did like this on the table. The quantum of money that fell, I said, Jesus. <laughs> so <laughs> immediately I was there with the secretary. Immediately I touched the money. I said, I started repeating some of his statements. I started saying that money, please go and call your brothers and your sisters. Tell them that I love them, that they should come. Because I used to see my money, but the quantity I saw, like fiscal cash that day, I was like, no, 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 no. This one cannot pass me by. Now, when I was saying that, the section was like, how can you be using some of this money to call <laughs> for money? And then immediately, Mr. Deke said, it doesn't really matter. That was what he said. And then I kept, keep, I kept it in my mind. Mm. See, all these things were seen like the See, you could literally dress up for a one million deal and get it. You could dress up for a one million deal and get it. But you could have an idea for a one million deal and you don't look like it and nobody gives you. Yeah. But uh, what I'm saying is practically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that let's assume that you are a guy who has opportunities up there mm -hmm. and you have uh, 20,000 francs and with a poor mindset. You go into a stuffy place, you are drinking and you are chopping fish and yeah. you womanize and you go back home the 20,000 francs is finished yes. and then the guy with the big mindset has 2,000 francs and then goes around Santa Lucia and meets who has who has that um, the 
probability, higher probability of meeting somebody mm -hmm. with whom they can share and meet and, and uh, we're talking about opportunities. The person with the lesser yeah. cash. Yeah. Yeah. But the because of mind, the milieu, you find yourself. Yes. There in, are so many people. In, in Nigeria, there is a group of girls, they call them Ikeja girls, mm -hmm. this, this Lagos girls. They don't really have much money, but this is what they do. They package very well. Mm -hmm. They can gather like five of them, rent an apartment in the island. Now, these girls, they buy their dresses, they dress well. They go to big hotels and stay there, just buy a glass of wine and sit there. That's where big people come. Yeah. They stay there, get their contracts. If you want to do runs, like don't do prostitution, they do prostitution with rich people. Mm -hmm. Because no poor man comes to that place. Mm -hmm. But you that have a poor man's mentality, mentality. You, you, yeah. you, you know, you're already afraid of g getting close to the gate. Mm -hmm. So you now spend all your money, like I said, take the little money you have worked, go to one place that is so noisy that gives you headache and mm -hmm. all of that. And by the time you're done, you must have spent like 20,000. I said one day, I said, Poor people spend more money than rich people, especially mm -hmm. on food and drinks. Mm -hmm. A rich man who is busy, who is working, leaves the house, takes a cup of tea or coffee and a, a slice of bread, and then takes it, he's busy, he's talking on his phone, he's typing his computer, he is gone. Come back, take a little food, and then he has a lot of work to do. But a, a poor man does not even have a job. So he spent all his time eating to console his poverty. If we fix our mind, the okay. government goes back to the mindset. The mindset, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, good teaching. It's a new Konge blessed writing from uh, Douala. Um, but poverty is a disease. I'm, I'm fervor writing from Bermen that poverty can kill child. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, yeah, so you better flee from it. Um, this one says. Mr. Lee, I don't understand why the lady keeps laughing uncontrollably when serious matters are just... <laughs> 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 serious matters of my last name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, good evening, Mr. Liu. Um Shimo Serge from Bafusam. A bad mindset is not just any ordinary weakness. It is a critical weakness. Poor people associate with negative or unsuccessful people. Poor people are smaller than their problems. Hello, Liu. One of the failure with our community now is people have learned how to spend money than how to create uh, it. Most rich people don't even know how to spend money. Collins is writing uh, from Dwala exactly what uh, Mr. Teke just said. Uh, hello, Mr. Liu. Good day to you and family. Thanks for being there. Best of wishes. Let the universe open more uh, to you, Reverend Teke. You have exposed the secret to connect with the infinite spirit of the universe in uh, is the sum total with more time for us thanks ngala divine is writing from uh boya yes so he's definitely going to create more time for you stop calling please good evening mr liu and the panelists it's always a learning process listening to all of you thanks uh to you mr liu for making this possible more grace to you mr liu and uh, text global team daisy is writing from kumba um we are out of time we have to end yes we have to end yet we, we are going to look at other keys to unraveling these mysteries no mm -hmm. to yeah. becoming yeah. average because i also want to be like mr teke eh? mm. <laughs> all of us all all of mr. Teke. yeah yeah free are you not the secretary general for this, this <laughs> <thing>? <laughs> okay we want to say uh we are uh, very grateful to you all who took part in this program thank you for coming Yes, sir. thank you so much to the audience. Thank you so much. And we have so many upcoming programs. Please be keen to follow in our pages. We have um, the Billionaire Mindset Conference that will be coming up 3rd of July. We have um, registration for text big projects going on. We have Shep Academy going on. A lot of activities are going on. And let's go back today still believing that the change we want to see, we are the change and we can affect that change in our society. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you too to you, uh, Mr. Neva, for coming. Thank you so much, Mr. Leo. Thank you, our televiewers, for always being there and following on and contributing. As uh, we have been saying here, there is need for you to admire people who are where you want to go. I am a testimony. Uh, I remember one day before I had to start coming here, I sat with a friend we were watching. I was never watching my media prime. We were watching here and I saw Apostle Ambe and Apostle Divine and I got up from my chair and I said, these are people that rob minds when we sit and talk. They cannot be going on TV and I'm not going there. And the next day, Jason Golov called me. That's a testimony I'm giving you. And if you see people who are making it, don't shy. Don't envy them. 
admire them and see yourself going there and you're going to meet them. A lot of opportunities are surrounding uh, Tess Global. She has already spoken about uh, the billionaire's mindset. I call this book a book for every home. It is uh, a pathway that you should grab and follow it and discuss it in your family meetings because it is what is going to lead us to living this generation better than we met it. Okay, please, I'm Shay John, uh, one of your fans. Please help me with Prophet Ambeva uh, uh, and Tens WhatsApp number. <laughs> okay, I will send it to you. Uh, this is not in the program today. They are definitely going to be sending it to you. Good evening, Mr. Leo. I wish to tell Mr. Teke that some of his clients are not uh, too good with the current change in the business. Okay, I don't know what the change is. Can you just call? <laughs> call him? I don't. I don't know. That's not what we are discussing. Sure. Thank sure. you for coming. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leo. Mm -hmm. It's always a pleasure being here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I once more follow Miss L to invite you officially to the Billionaire Mindset Conference, which will be taking place here in Douala on the third of July. And the good thing about it is that anybody who will be attending that conference will be going home with a free copy of the Billionaire mindset mm. and to attend it early registration costs you only 10,000 francs plus a free copy of the book mm. and we also have another um, event on the 26th here um, for text global you're going to learn about the numerous opportunities if you want an opportunity to grow you definitely attend this one and for those in Bamenda who will be in Bamenda on the 20th of this month that is next Sunday to talk about the opportunities that we have for you so stay blessed keeping work keep watching my media prime and see you wherever you are okay we also want to say thank you to you thanks uh thanks global the big man thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks so much thanks and um i want to say um the changes uh in the system so far is for the good of the investors we actually want everybody to be comfortable i know no changes is uh it's easy, but then changes are always always come with challenges. So the changes are okay. They are for the good of all of our investors and our partners. And I want to say I'm excited, and um, we are here to do business with you. We are here to make sure the average man enjoy what financial freedom looks like. I love you so much, and thank you so much to uh, my media prime, and thanks so much to Mr. Liu. Uh, part of my manners for coming late today. I've been working since morning. Okay. Thank you. You all have to work at the night. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank you all who took time off to watch the program, the production team. And uh, stay blessed. Bye-bye.